together. We change the world. Hello everyone, it's your boy Theo here with a should you pull tier list for Celeste BT cycle. Some disclaimer before we start. This tier list is just my opinion and is not a representation of strength. Defo is a fairly balanced game where you can make almost all units work in the correct team. If you have a favorite, always go for them. That said, this video might be helpful if you're playing on a stricter budget. And unless otherwise mentioned, all characters are assumed to have their full kit. I won't go too in-depth into each character's kit. Check out other content creator if you're interested in a more detailed breakdown. For the first tier, we have Theo approves. These are meta-defining characters that can potentially make it easier for you to clear events. Having them in your pocket can sometimes save you a bit of a headache. Next is the You Decide tier. Characters that are generally useful and can fit into many teams, or have easy FR condition, or ones that work extremely well with minimal investments. Consider pulling these characters if you have the need to expand your roster. Final tier is Safe Skip, usually reserved for characters that doesn't have a unique gimmick, or characters that just require too much investment and setup just to be decent. First event of the cycle is Six Warriors Quest Area 3 featuring reworks for Zidane and Thancred, and a new BT and FR for Celeste. Both dual dagger wielders are resting their tails in the safe skip area, so we'll just skip ahead to the big opera hit herself, Celeste. I realize this will be a very controversial tier placement, but I put Celeste in the you decide tier. I need to reiterate again, this tier list is not always about character strength. Celeste is a very strong character, but before I dive into the reason, let's talk a little bit about her kit. Celeste is a tank and ice enchanter with often trap damage. She has three conditions to her FR. First is steel ice damage for 5% with a bonus of 20% if it's Celeste, often attacks included. Then we have plus 20% when Celeste attacks an enemy targeting herself. And finally, plus 20% per ally when absorbing brave damage. Since she is an ice enchanter, the ice condition is always covered. Her second condition is a selfish one and can only trigger during her own turn. And the third one can be quite awkward to set up. Celeste herself absorbs all magic damage, but the effect is not extended to her allies. You will need the likes of Leon to enable party-wide absorb. All this considered, I find Celeste to be a funny character. Her force time is stronger when she is on her own, which she can do. There are plenty of JP video that features solo Celeste. In a solo run, the HP damage bonus is going to rack up very fast. Every enemy turn means one attack absorbed and one trap activated, increasing the HP bonus by 45%. Her FR is actively worse when used in a full party. When Celeste is run in a full team, she acts as your standard tank with often damage. Because she has a BT, she is the cream of the crop. But honestly, often tank is a saturated market already, and we often don't need more than one. If you already have a tank fully built, then I would say Celeste is a safe skip. Before we move on to the next event, like the video if you enjoy this kind of cycle overview, and subscribe for more default content. Next event is Aranea's Intercepting Wheels featuring the final C90 update for Aranea. She dives right into the UD set tier with her FR, plus 40% when delaying an enemy and this includes delay from breaks, and plus 30% when dealing critical brave damage. One of the best part of her FR is that it comes with a secondary effect of a party-wide 50% HP damage cap up during force time. Erenia is a DPS that works great with fellow break cancel DPS as well, like Cloud of Darkness, Gebrandt, Vayne, and Ardyn. If you enjoy a highly offensive strategy that doesn't involve new king with BT phase, then Erenia is a great choice. Final event of the month is Dorgan's character debut, featuring reworks for Lys as well as new character Dorgan. Just like the rest of FF14 cast, Liz gets no love from the devs, so we'll jump straight into Dorgan. 
The senior closer is an often attacker known for his flashy combo chains. His FR requires the use of win ability as well as inflicting a break. Norgan is quite a cool character. He relies on break to activate his follow-up attack and if his follow-up attack also breaks an enemy, it will chain into another one. Sephiroth with BT is easily Dorgan's best partner, allowing everyone access to break every single turn. A word of warning, Dorgan is one of those high setup cost character that is more suitable for veteran accounts. Now for my pool plan for the cycle, I'll be spending my resources on the two rebreaker, Aranea and Dorgan. As good as Celeste is, I'm already satisfied with my existing tanks. And that's it for the tier list and pool plan for Celeste BT cycle. What is your plan for this cycle? Let me know in the comments. If there's anything you disagree with, let me know as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!